You know the story already. Um, we're minding our own business when we were, were monitoring the Facebook page of investigative reporter Nas Aramia. Nas and he began pouring out uh, some details about what he called as a documentary coming up entitled Galamsey Economy. Okay, so everyone thought this was about mining, wasn't it? Later on, we found that the reference to Galamsey is reference to a, a similarity to a name that, about, that which Charles Edubwane is referred to, which is actually Galamsey. So G A. L-A-Z-E-Y. That's the nickname that he has had from Achimota School, Galanze. But for those of us who didn't know him then and don't know him that well, we hear it and we think it's Galamse. So I'm guessing that uh, the title Galamse Economy was really related to his nickname Galanze, which he has held in Achimota till now. A lot of his old friends continue to refer to him as that. So the title alone made people feel that this was about mining because, of course, we know we're still talking about uh, illegal mining, Galamse, and, and all of that. The recent wave of it, talking about the arrest of Aisha Wan, all of those matters made people believe that it was about Galamse. Okay. Nonetheless, it wasn't. It was about Charles Dubois. And I'm going to give you the account of somebody who was in the conference center who watched the film and who's put it out on social media in terms of what he saw. He's done quite a bit of critical analysis on it. We'll look at that as well. So the story then begins and says that uh, at the beginning, people were unaware that this was filmed in February 2018. Now, it would appear that at the time this was filmed, the story on Kusinyantechi had not yet been published, it would appear so. And it also appears that it, it, the, the, the Kusinyantechi investigation or the filming, the clandestine filming of Kusinyantechi was probably done at the same time of this particular film. I have still not yet watched the video. I think I'll see it tomorrow. I've made arrangements to see it. I'll see it tomorrow, but I've, I've still not seen it. But those who went to watch it, and who have given an account of it, say that the video is such that Charles Edubon is the only person you see in the video, he's the only one talking. It doesn't really give a sense of what actually occurred. And there's a lot of uh, voiceover that is sort of directing the viewer to a certain uh, conclusion that this viewer, this uh, person who watched the film thought it ought not to have been. You should have allowed the viewer to come to their own conclusion based on the documentary. But the voiceover was quite strong in pointing people out to what should happen. So then the, it was said that this had happened. So people were wondering that, ah, but this issue about pouring money on a table and collecting it and all of that, didn't uh, uh, people know, didn't they see it in Yantichi's video? By the time this was filmed, the Yantichi one had not been filmed. I don't know whether the authorities in Ghana are, were aware at the time that this was filmed in February 2018. But the big story, the big question then is, if it was filmed in February 2018, why is it being shown now four years later? Is it, is it a targeted at somebody? Is it targeted to embarrass other people other than the, the protagonists in the film, etc.? That question was answered on Twitter. We'll get to that. Okay, so let's get to the first part of the story. The Asasi Radio uh, account, which is also the account we checked of some of the investigators uh, that this account is true. So we're going to show you first the Asasi Radio account, and it's as follows. It says, and attributed to Asasi Radio, Asasi News has gathered that the Tiger Eye PI expose was filmed in Dubai on the 8th of February 2018, and the lead investigator in the recording was the late uh, Ahmed Hussein Swale, a Ghanaian investigative journalist who was shot and killed on the 16th of January 2019. Okay, let's move on. Tiger IPI investigators, according to our sources, that's according to Asasi Radio sources, who are familiar with the over four-year story, first used a contact at the Ministry of Finance, a principal economics officer, who proceeded to set up the meetings. Assuming the identity of a known Islamic bank in Bahrain, the undercover investigators pretended they were interested in setting up a bank in Ghana with $500 million uh, stated capital. So we, we, this is the story that, that is being built up. That Some people showed up. They say that they are private, uh, they, they are, oh, they are uh, chairman of a bank in Bahrain, and they want to invest $500 million cities in Ghana. And the way they want to do it is to buy, uh, obtain a banking license and and have their stake in Ghana. And their stated capital for the banking lines was 500 million cities. I believe that the Bank of Ghana is, is uh, charging something like is this 60, 70, or 100 million cities for banking stated capital in the new rules. I can't remember now. But, but whatever they had, the 500 million they had was in excess of the uh, requirement for Bank of Ghana. So they would have been qualified to do so. Let's go on with the story and see what happens. The services of one of the leading law firms in Ghana were engaged to facilitate this half a billion dollar investment. Now we know who that law firm is, don't we? Uh, we know who that law firm is, and we know the proprietors of the law firm as well. But let's go on. All right. They requested to meet uh, with officials of finance ministry in Dubai to discuss their investment options. This was proving impossible, so it had to be timed to coincide with scheduled travels. 
Subsequently, the Ghanaian lawyer and Charles Edubuahim, who was then the deputy minister for finance, met with the undercover team posing as investors in the hotel suite in Dubai on 8 February 2018, just 13 months into office of President Akufado. So this happened a very long time ago. February 2018, Akufado had just done uh, a little over a year in office, and this when this happened. Let's move on. Our information, that's the information of Asasi Radio, is that apart from the other instances of alleged conflict of interest, the investigative piece uh, to be premiered on November 14, that's yesterday, is predominantly centered on this encounter of the 8th of February. After the meeting with Charles Edubuahi, Tiger Eye was not satisfied and wanted to trap the bigger fish, Finance Minister Ken Oforiata. They were to have had their chance. They thought uh, uh, they were to have had their chance. They thought when, after several attempts, Mr. Oforiata agreed to meet with them at an airport in Dubai on transit to Tokyo, Japan. Now, this is where the plot really worries me, that um, people are looking for either conflicts of interest or are looking to find people who are actually making money of their work in a, in a manner that is either immoral or illegal and that is detrimental to the interest of the Ghanaian taxpayer or the Ghanaian worker, however you look at it. And according to this report, if we can rely on it, it says that they met Chelsea Dubois. They were not satisfied with what they did, so they decided let's meet Ken Oferata himself. So the circumstances of what happened with Chelsea Dubois are circumstances that they were hoping will happen with Ken Oferata as well. That's a very, a very big fish, not just Minister of Finance, but MPP financier, you know, the important person. He runs Data Bank, he's a World Economic Forum awardee. All of that, that's, that's really what worries me that people can sit down and make a decision like that. That, okay, we didn't get this one. Let's go and get How do we get him? Let's try and tell him that we have some money for him. And I'm not sure this is something to do. I'm not sure this is something that a good man or a good woman would like to do. I mean, people, if people are stealing public money, by all means, we have to catch them all the time. And uh, we can find out if, if the, the, balance, the budget doesn't balance, whatever comes to parliament, the transparency of parliament, uh, uh, finance and economic committee. I mean, the transparency of the work of Parliament, uh, select and ad hoc committees can all the time bring us to the conclusion that person A or person Y has offended the state in terms of the fiduciary relationship that they have with the people of Ghana when they are holding out office as Minister of State, Minister of Finance, Deputy Minister of Finance and all that. We will be able to find that. But what concerns me is how people are able to decide that this is what we are going to do to to embarrass somebody, not just to embarrass, just to really, as we say in Pidgin English, to finish him off. So you, so you start, you do one, it doesn't work. You don't assume that, oh, maybe this person has a level of integrity, so let's leave him. He has passed the test. I don't know why they never say somebody has passed the test. They have to continue and continue and continue. So the story here, if we have to rely on it from Assassin Radio, is that they were looking for Kenneth Friata, so they did find him. Now, what happened in that meeting in February 2018? Let's go on. So it says, they were to have, they were to have their chance, uh, they thought, when, after several attempts, Mr. Foyata agreed to meet them at an airport in Dubai on transit to Tokyo, Japan. Okay. In the company of his then personal assistant, Mr. Michael Bediakon, Mr. Foyata met the supposed investors or investigators at the Dubai terminal uh, hosted Dubai International Airport on 5th of April 2018 at around 6.30 p.m. Mr. Foyata was informed that the meeting was with the chairman of Al -Bar Baraka. Al, Al Baraka Islamic Bank of Bahrain, whose interest was to invest 500 million to set up an ethical bank in Ghana. Okay. The meeting, per our checks, lasted some five minutes. Kenofurata left very irritated when he was offered a gift, which he refused to accept, and walked out with his PA, who was also offered a gift that was rejected as well. It remains to be seen if this episode will feature in Monday's premiere. That's by Wilberforce from Asasi Radio. So the, the video, what Wilberforce is asking the investigators, that the video that you shot, which shows Ken Oferata refusing to receive the money, and his PA, Michael Bediako, refusing to, receive, uh, to take the money, would you now publish it as a showing a public servant who has showed a level of integrity? And the report said, if we are very irritated, as a society, shouldn't we think about what we do with these things? I mean, shouldn't we think about that? Shouldn't, shouldn't we manage and decide that some of these things we will respond to, some of these things we will not respond to? Because we cannot encourage people who sometimes can have ulterior motives to, to do some of these things. Yes, we, we are very big on corruption. Yes, we are very big on 
public sector corruption and we don't want people to corrupt our monies in the public so every now and then we pass laws in parliament we have passed the public procurement authority act is in parliament we have passed anti-money laundering act is in parliament we have passed all of these laws to make it more difficult for our people to steal our money and also to create the level of transparency that is required so the minister of finance cannot make certain decisions without going to parliament and when he goes to parliament he has to show parliament a document if all of these things don't suffice and we have to use undercover agents, let's by all means use them. But when you go to the, the, uh, the supposed uh, investigatee for at the first instance and he says, I'm not interested, should you badge him? And when he says, I'm not interested, should you report his lack of interest as well? Anyway, these are questions that I'm sure we can deal with. Let's, uh, 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 in spite of all that happened, in spite of all of what we have said, I believe that the vice president's response was correct. In the circumstances, that the vice president's response was very correct. Because here's a vice president who is a presidential candidate of the ruling party for election that is two years away. And here's a vice president that has also touted himself as being competent and on the path of integrity. So if an investigative documentary comes out and says that uh, I am collecting money for the vice president's so-called fees, the vice president's report, response, I believe, was correct. <laughs> Let's now move on to the documentary viewer, one who went to watch the documentary. And he captured it almost like a news reporter. Let's see what he found. All right. One, he says, the documentary lasted for about 45 minutes or 50 minutes thereabout. About 75 minutes of the time was unrelated to the subject. Now, I'm not so sure what subject this uh, viewer was looking for. Because if he was looking for the subject of mining, the documentary had no intentions of talking about mining. It was just a catchphrase uh, for the headline relating to a nickname that the main protagonist in the film is called. So I don't know whether when he refers to the subject, he means mining. They shouldn't have expected anything in mining at all. It was, it was just a, a, a film like the way people capture the name of the film and, and call it anything uh, just so that it can attract people one way or the other. Sometimes later on you understand why they chose the topic they chose. But this is, this is what... Uh, it wasn't about mine. So uh, the viewer who was saying 75% of it was not about the subject, uh, there was nothing going to be about mine anyway. It continued. It captured Akufuado from candidate to president and his promises. One is not so sure what that is doing in there, but I can guess what it is. So they are trying to uh, demonstrate that during Akufuado's campaign, he said that he would be against corruption. And they are sort of suggesting that even though he said that he's against corruption, here is an evidence of corruption in his government. Something like that, I think. I'm guessing. I'm just guessing for the documentary producer that maybe that's what he was. That's the reason why he's putting out Akufuado's uh, uh, campaign and, and uh, promises. Also, that this video is so old, you see. It's so old. So at the time they put it together, Akufuado's campaign and promises may have been relevant to the conversation around Ghanaian politics and around, around uh, 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 the scrutiny of politics. So this is 2018. So if you are doing a film in 2018, Akufado's promises of 2016 uh, will be relevant to the story. If you have found that a minister of his 13 months after the government is corrupted, then you will connect it to that. So again, the other explanation for why they started with Akufado's stuff is that it is very old. So today, you won't understand, but what are they talking about 2016? For Akufado has run another campaign of 2020. So if you want to talk about his recent campaign, you go there, you won't pick 2016. The reason why I have 2016 is the film is old, you know. All right, let's move on. All right. Additionally, he says, um, they recapped the Nyantechi and Charles Bissou story. Once again, the story is very, very old, isn't it? So in talking about a story of 2018, uh, and, well, that's quite confusing because we are finding out that the filming situation was about the same time. So by the time they are filmed, they had not yet published the Nyantechi one. By the time this was being filmed, the Nyantechi one was not published yet. So we d I don't get that well, but let's move on. Nyantechi and the Charles Bissou story. Number three, the event on Edu uh, Boahe focused, uh, focused only on him and no other person was shown in the video. Four, some money was given to him for shopping and he took it. People were anxious to watch the documentary, so Ghanaians came in their numbers, leading to long queues formed outside the auditorium. In the end, people were angry at the organizers because the documentary was really overhyped, as he says. Okay. So this is, the, this is the documentary part. This is the part of the documentary. He said that the documentary was overhyped. And uh, that's, that's what happened at the conference center. So my take on this, and I'd like you to send in your social media comments to Good Evening Ghana official that, sh should, we be, should we be doing that as a country? I mean, I, I'm no, I, don't, I don't even get it. Should we 
should we engender, facilitate, and encourage this kind of uh, way in which we find corruption? I'm not sure we should do that. I'm not sure we should do that. I don't know how many countries do that. But if we call Ghana a happy home and people are working and we want to find out their corruption, we should find it out. But this way of going and give, and you know, these things happen all the time. And I've had experience before that I'll share with you tonight. Uh, the first one is many, many years ago in 2006 or seven. I, I had a, a, some job to do in Takrade. So I was driving to Takrade. I wasn't driving. I was, I was in a car going to Takrade with two or three friends of mine. And then I got a call. I, I didn't know that I was on Peace FM. Peace FM used to have a program Friday evenings. They used to do this. They call, they call you, you don't know you're on air, then they ask you questions. And then before you see, they play the jingle, Peace FM, Station with a Vision. They used to have a program. I didn't even know that they had a program like that. Because I only listen to Peace FM in the morning after Kokro Kro, I really don't catch it anymore. So I didn't know they have all of these uh, fanciful, interesting programs on the night. This was a Friday night. So the guy called me and said, it's some you know, Arab sounding tone says he likes my program. I said, okay, thank you very much. He says, okay, he wants to appear on the program. I said, okay, you can appear on the program. What do you want to say? He says, oh, he just wants to talk about how my program is good. But the reason why he's calling me is that he wanted to know how much it costs to appear on the program. I said, it doesn't cost anything. We don't charge. And I still say that I get that. How much do you charge? I said, we don't charge. And he says, okay, he wants to advertise his, um, his um, thing, his, something he's doing. He has some enterprise he wants to advertise on my program. I said, no problem. If you want to advertise on Good Evening, and I don't make the decision. You have to go through the commercial people, and they, they bring it to me. If I have to interview somebody, it's a commercial interview. They come to me and say, I have to do this commercial interview 15 minutes long and we have charged this amount of money they, they decide all that so you go to them guy wouldn't budge that's okay i'll go to them but i miss about me and you now it's some arab guy so what is it what what can i give you what can i show you can i make you very happy i know how to make people happy because you're a good man and i why we kept on going like that like that and i said please i'm not interested in you making me happy i'm happy already if you want to do something on the program, go to commercial. So I said, you should call Atoko Aminadazi. At that time, he was my producer. I said, call Atoko Aminadazi on this line. I gave him his line. Then, as I was having the conversation, I heard it through the phone, Peace FM. And I said, ah, what's going on? And then, so I said, ah, I, I get very confused. Man, they say, you're live on Peace FM. I said, oh my goodness. So, <laughs> these kinds of things started. Soon, soon after that, a friend of mine called and said that, uh, you've done very well. I was listening to you. I said, but what, what is this? I said, they do this program on peace every Friday evening. You're not careful. They call you. You don't know your name and all of that. I see Bolare used to do that, but he did that on happy occasions. Your birthday, he calls you. You don't know your air. You don't know your, your relatives are there. That, that's nice. But this one is very, very dangerous. And then the other one, 2018 or 19, somebody calls me and says, he has $19 million to give to Bank of Ghana, but he's having difficulty in bringing the money to Bank of Ghana. He called me. I said, so what do you want me to do? He says, I want you to take me to the president. I said, really? You want to bring money to Ghana? You want to go to president? Okay, go to Bank of Ghana and talk to them about it. Or go to Ministry of Finance and talk to them about it. Then he says, and he was on speaker. Somebody was with me, so we were listening. Then he said, okay, no, I have 34, uh, 54 million. I said, your 19 has now jumped to 54. I said, yes, we, can, we have a lot of money we can bring to Ghana, but we want influential people like you can take. I said, we'll pay you. Oh, we'll treat you nice. We'll give you something. I said, please, please, if you have money for Ghana, go to Bank of Ghana. And, and you know, young people, you like money. I mean, you have, you've heard people say, I like money. Yeah, li like money. But also pray a lot. You see, young people pray a lot. Because sometimes, the very, the very fact of your existence, it annoys somebody. Just, just that. Just, you have done your own work. Oh, the person didn't do the work for you. You have worked hard. You are the doctor, you're a lawyer, an engineer, or something. You are you're a spare pass dealer. You've worked hard. Your own hard work. But it just annoys somebody. Who hasn't worked as hard? It just annoys him. So be very careful. And to do that, you have to indulge in a lot of prayer. And, and that's why Apostle Paul said, pray without season. It's very, very important. So that the, the devourer, you see, the Bible has a line. It said, I shall rebuke the devourer for your sake. The devourers come in many, many, many dimensions. So for young people, do like money. But also pray that the devourer will be rebuked for your sake. So they, this happened. And I, they called me. I said, I'm not interested. Then they said, okay, let's meet you at Labadi Beach Hotel. I think they know I like going there or something like that. I said, no, I don't want to meet you. So you go and meet this person. He has a camera on his shoulder. And he says, okay, so this is $10,000. Take it. Or this is 10,000 CDs. Take it. And then he films it. And then, hey, conference center, line. Galamse economy. And then they come in. That, that's what happens. That's what happens. That's very bad. That is very, very bad. And it ought to be condemned.